What's up guys, today we're going to be talking about five compact smartphones that you guys should check out today. And you can say that these phones have small screens because compared to most phones these days, um, you know, they are at 6.8 inches. And that's one of the big complaints I get is, can you recommend any phones under 6 inches? There's not really a ton of phones, so you're limited, honestly. Um, but I do uh, have some and I've used them all and I have smaller hands myself. So these are all I can confirm very comfortable. The Sue Zenfo 9 is literally the best compact smartphone uh, this year. It is just just awesome. It checks all the boxes off in my opinion. It feels great in the hand aluminum frame. It does have a plastic back but it is a textured back and I think it still retains a premium feel and look to it. Uh, it's IP68 dust and water resistant. It has a 5.9 inch super AMOLED display. It's HDR10+, 1100 nits peak brightness, 1080p panel, 445 for the PPI. Guys, this is a beautiful bright panel and like I said, it's very easy to one hand. This phone it is running Android 12 with Zen UI, and Zen UI is actually pretty close to stock Android. It just has a few like a little Asus things, but it's actually very close to stock Android, so it's very clean looking. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 Plus chip on here, and then this phone can basically game pretty much anything. So Fortnite, Call of Duty, PUBG, it plays it at high settings. Uh, this is a beast when it comes to gaming performance. Uh, now you have a 128 gig and 8 gig version. I believe that's the version that I have. And um, you also have, what's very cool on here is a headphone jack. Not many flagship phones have a headphone jack. This one does. Not only that, but it has some amazing stereo speakers as well too. Very loud bass quality. Um, just overall really good full sound for such a small phone. Uh, you also have NFC on here. The fingerprint scanner is physical and it's side mounted. That works really well. And uh, this phone, in my opinion, does have very good cameras. It's a 50 megapixel standard, a 12 megapixel ultra wide. And yes, it's missing a telephoto lens, but... Honestly, the cameras are really good on here. It's 8K24 and then a 12 megapixel selfie cam that shoots in 4K30. You're getting phenomenal shots on here. Very high quality, flagship quality uh, shots in my opinion. So I was really impressed uh, with the image quality on this phone. And the biggest surprise here is that battery life is actually good on this phone. And that is a massive surprise because you can't say that about most phones that are small. This has a 4300 milliamp battery. 30 watt charging easily, easily gets through six hours of screen on time. I would argue even seven. Um, so this phone is just a phenomenal buy. All right, guys, if you can't afford the Zenfone 9, the predecessor is very good as well, the Zenfone 8. So this is a very awesome phone. Again, this one actually has a glass back aluminum frame, and it feels really premium in the hand. Also, still the same 5.9 inch display as Super AMOLED HDR10+, 1100 nits peak brightness, 1080p, 446 for the PPI. Literally the same display, same dimensions, all that good stuff. And it's a very easy phone to hold. This phone also got the Android 12 and this phone has the Snapdragon AAA processor uh, so again really no difference from the Agent 1 to the triple eight. this one still plays games uh, the same it still runs uh, the same as well too as far as just smoothness and everything so you're not really going to find a big performance difference uh, you will with benchmarks slightly but again virtually the same uh, you also have 128 gigs of internal storage uh, 8 gigs of RAM on this one and you can find this for like 450 bucks so like I said you can't for a 650 dollar phone then go with this one this is a little bit you know better priced um, this one has stereo speakers as well too pretty much the same quality very loud bass very good mids and highs you know a full sound and then this one also has the headphone jack as well too which is nice fingerprint scanner is under the display uh, so that works really well and then this phone has pretty good camera setup as a 64 megapixel standard with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and then it shoots in 8K24 and then a 12 megapixel standard that shoots in 4K30. And um, image quality is also pretty good in here. You guys can see the pictures kind of speak for themselves. I thought the image quality was good. Great color, good dynamic range. And again, this one doesn't have any type of telephoto lens, but honestly, if you can get over that, um, it takes some great shots, so I was really impressed with that. Now, the battery life is not as good on this one. Uh, it's 4,000 4, milliamps with 30 watt charge. It's not as good as the Zenfone 9, so this phone typically ran around 4 hours and 30 minutes, um, which is fine, again, but that's not technically a full day of use, so definitely keep that into consideration. All right, next is the iPhone SE 2020. I like this one because it's just super cheap these days. It's 200 bucks. It's really not that much uh different than the uh the 2022 version honestly so you get to save a lot of money this one has a you know pretty similar to design to the previous older iphones like the iphone 8 aluminum frame 
IP67 dust and water resistant. You know, it has the big chunky bezels. Uh, but the screen is really small on here. It's a 4.7 inch display, Retina IPS, uh, 3, 625 for the max brightness and then it's 720p plus 326 for the ppi overall it's a fine display since it's just so so small that the specs on here it looks pretty good in real life so this phone does have ios 16 on it. it's running the apple a13 chip which is still very very powerful chip it could still game at high settings uh basically any game after that it was able to play um, so I had no issues as far as performance with this phone. 64 gigs of internal storage and 3 gigs of RAM on the base model. Uh, this phone does have NFC. It has the Touch ID, the physical button that a lot of people like. Um, and you also have somewhat of a pretty good camera. It's just, it's just only one camera. That's the only downside to this phone. 12 megapixel standard, shoots in 4K 60. 7 megapixel selfie, shoots in 1080p 30. Uh, image quality is actually pretty good on this phone. It does take very good photos in my opinion. But like I said, the only downside is there's no ultra wide, there's no telephoto. It's just that one camera. But if you can get over that just for point and clicks, I think this takes uh, very good photos, especially considering the price uh, of this device. Now, the battery situation on here, it's 1,821 milliamps. So basically, it's on the same boat with the Zenfone 8. It gets like four hours of screen on time. Uh, it does have wireless charging and um, I really like that. But overall, uh, battery life is just going to be kind of okay-ish on this phone. It's not going to be great. Um, but definitely, I really like this phone. All right, guys, next is the iPhone 13 mini. Uh, this is a, another awesome smaller flagship phone that I think you guys would really like. The price is coming down on this phone every year. So it's at a pretty good price right now. I think it's sitting at around six to $500. And um, I really like the design on here. Again, looks really good. Aluminum frame, IP68. Um, it has the XDR OLED display on here. It gives up the 1200 nits peak brightness at 5.4 inches. 1080p, 476 for the PPI. So overall, again, a high quality, very beautiful display. It really, the only thing this display is missing is like high refresh rate. Um, but this phone running iOS 16, it has the Apple A15 chip, extremely powerful chip guys, um, absolutely beast. If you buy this phone, you really won't have to upgrade for years and years to come because it's just going to be blazing fast. Um, you also have 128 gigs of internal storage and 4 gigs of RAM on here. The stereo speakers are actually pretty impressive on here, great bass quality, very loud. NFC is on board, Face ID of course is here. Uh, you also have a very good camera setup, a 12 megapixel standard and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. It basically takes flagship quality photos, guys. You can basically put it on par with like an iPhone 13, 13 Pro. Uh, it's 4K uh, 60 on here for the front and back with a 12 megapixel selfie. So overall, you already know what you're getting into. Uh, great images on the 13 mini now this phone does have actually pretty good battery life as well too uh, this has a 2438 milliamp battery and then you also have wireless charging with the magsafe uh, wireless charging basically this phone can pretty much do about six hours of screen on time for me personally especially if you're not like a heavy gamer uh, battery life is pretty good thanks to that uh, a15 chip all right guys next is the s10e so you can find this for around 200 bucks uh, I still really like the design on here. It's aluminum frame. It's glass back. It's IP68. Uh, you also have a 5.8 inch dynamic AMOLED. It's HDR10 plus at 1080p 438. Again, another phone that is very easily uh, one handable. And then you also have Android 12 uh, with One UI 4.1. This phone is currently in its security patch stages as well too. Uh, you have the Snapdragon 855. I did a gaming test guys. Check it out. This phone still plays games really really well call of duty PUBG, it was like blowing through it like it was nothing uh, you also have micro sd card support on here so you can expand the storage and you also have a headphone jack on here with stereo speakers nfc samsung desktop support uh, all the bells and whistles are actually still on here uh, you also have a fingerprint scanner side mounted it's physical and that works really well and uh, you also have on this phone i think pretty good cameras now i'm not going to say the best cameras this is probably um, compared to the rest of the phones, it's probably like number four on the list of the best cameras. Uh, it has a 12 megapixel standard and a 16 megapixel ultra wide. It shoots in 4K 60 on the front and back. And then you have a 10 megapixel uh, selfie cam. It takes very good shots um, on here. But if you're looking for the best camera, I would look at one of the Asus or one of the iPhones. Um, but I still think it takes great, uh, you know, 
shots, especially in good lighting and stuff like that. Uh, I, I honestly don't see any, any issues with this phone. Um, you also have a 3,100 milliamp battery. It does have wireless charging and reverse wireless charging, so you can charge up another device. But again, this is one of those phones that can only get you around four hour and 30 minutes of screen on time. So you're not gonna get a full day of use out of this phone. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Be sure to let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you guys in the next